Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Khoury. I am a policy data analyst with the Rochester Police Accountability Board, and I'm very eager to share with you all today our most recent proposal for change coming out of the Division of Policy and Oversight titled a cost of misconduct, or excuse me, the cost of misconduct. All right. So to get us started today, we're going to talk about some background information, go over some case studies, and outline the main objective for this analysis. We'll go over the civil claims process in Rochester, discuss what information we used for this analysis and how we acquired it. Then we'll go into our results and discussion, talking about the impact to taxpayers through a budget analysis, seeing how our claims compare to other cities in upstate New York seeing how our claims compare within the departments of the city of Rochester. And finally, looking at the claims specific to the Rochester Police Department. Then we'll take a look at what does RPD do with this information? And last, we'll take a look at our recommendations. So with the growing awareness and visibility of police misconduct, um, a lot of folks have started to become interested in understanding the impacts um, uh, the impacts of police misconduct. We are not the only institution uh, to look into this. Um, there are other municipalities, for example, the city of Chicago, who in 2019 released a report detailing $46.8 million in litigation costs for claims against the police. They have released a similar report annually every year since. Uh, in Austin, Texas, a nonprofit institution called We Measure found that from 2012 to 2018, on average, the taxpayers of Austin were paying $4.7 million on police misconduct payouts. And even national institutions like the Washington Post, who conducted an assessment considering 25 major departments and found that $3.2 billion from 2010 to 2020 was spent on police misconduct payout. It's important to note that Rochester declined to respond to the Washington Post's inquiry when asked to participate um, in this assessment. So our primary objective is to understand how does Rochester fit into all of this? What is the cost of misconduct to the taxpayers of Rochester? And how do the policies that govern the civil claim process affect it? Many of us in the city are familiar with the tragic loss of Daniel Prude in March of 2020, which just to read directly, um, who quote unquote, died after being restrained by police during a mental health emergency. Many of us are also aware that this resulted in a $12, $12 million settlement through the city to the family of Daniel Prude. And therefore we also know that these financial costs, these tangible impacts of police misconduct, which we seek to quantify in the report are merely the tip of the iceberg. For every act of police misconduct, there is trauma, there is injury, it impacts loved ones, community members, and those are things that we cannot capture. Although we are unable to quantify them, the importance of them cannot be overstated. So here we have some statements from impacted Rochesterians of alleged police misconduct. We encourage you to pause here read these statements, and think about those that have been impacted that we know of and those that we don't know of. So let's talk about the civil claims process here in Rochester. If somebody feels as though um, they want to seek restitution on uh, something that has taken place on behalf of the city, they are welcome to file a claim with the city. The city can then choose to either settle which results in a payout, or they can litigate, which goes to a trial. Once it goes to a trial, it may or may not come to a payout. But it's important to note that even after a trial begins, at any point in time, it can be settled. It can be settled before the trial, during the trial, or even after a verdict. So all of these decisions on settling, litigating, when to do it, how much to pay, all of that is controlled by the city's law department called Corporation Council. And when we compare that centralized decision-making process to other cities, we see that we're kind of unique. We see that cities like Buffalo and Syracuse actually diffuse this power more effectively through their government. We see the city council or the comptroller in both of these cities 
involved in weighing in on the decision of settling or litigation. So here's a uh, timeline, and we're going to go over the information that we use for this analysis and how we acquired it. I won't go through all of the timeline, but I do want to highlight a few key events at the beginning that we noticed ended up becoming a pattern and a trend. And I'm sure you'll be able to read that as you go through it yourself. August 17th, the PAB submitted an initial source of information request to the RPD. Uh, August 21st, 2023, the Corporation Council denied our request. Um, knowing the information that we requested was public information, the PAB submitted then a FOIL on September 7th for the same information that was requested on August 17th. And in anticipation of a denial, we worked with community members through the Police Accountability Board Alliance to submit a very similar FOIL requesting the same things that they were through a community member. And that happened on September 21st, 2023. On October 18th, 2023, both uh, our FOIL was uh, denied by Corporation Council and the Police Accountability Board Alliance FOIL was fulfilled by Corporation Council. Now, it's important to note it was only partially filled. Um, we wanted to be able and we asked for not only all of the civil claims data within the city of Rochester, but any discipline records associated with sustained misconduct for police involved in those civil cases. Uh, we only received the civil claims and we did not receive the disciplinary files, which necessarily limited our scope. Effectively, we walked or we conducted this analysis using five data sets. The first being the Rochester civil claims data since 2012. We used the Buffalo civil claims data since 2016 and the Syracuse civil claims data since 2017. We used the Rochester annual budget and we use IA pro entries for civil claims. And again, just to emphasize all of this information, the acquisition of all of this information was largely facilitated through the intervention of community members. If not for the intervention of community members, acquiring this information from the city would have been exceptionally difficult. And still, even through that, we have uh, outstanding data requests. Again, those disciplinary records, but also 78 claims with missing payout amounts that we have now requested iteratively and still not heard back from. So impact to taxpayers. How do we pay for this? So many of us are familiar with the city's annual budget. We know that that funds things like the police department, the person in crisis team, the police accountability board, the fire department, the environmental services, the school district, libraries, and of course, risk management. Now, risk management is a section under undistributed funds. And the purpose of it is to create insurance for the rest of these agencies. So in the event that any of these agencies have a civil claim filed against them, the insurance would be responsible for paying out that amount. But we still have to pay into that fund, risk management, every year into the budget. And the question is, how much are we spending there? So before we get overwhelmed, we're going to look at this very briefly and quickly, and then we're going to move on. But the primary thing to note here is that the transparency in reporting for, uh, well, let me first just say here on the left, we are looking at all of the budgeted amount from 2011 to present for these claims, right? And then on the right, we are looking at what's actually spent as opposed to what's budgeted, what we actually spent those same years. And a couple of things that we notice immediately, the trend on transparency. Uh, transparency and reporting becomes significantly more opaque after 2020. And we see that here in the red areas highlighted. Prior, all of the allocations of funds were clearly specified, and we don't have that clear specificity after 2020 in the budgeted amounts or the actual spent. So with that, we're actually going to just refer to the totals that are here, which is the total budgeted amount, the total that was actually spent and then the difference. All right, so we budgeted $21 million. We actually spent $48.7 million. And then from RPD's end, we spent $25.5 million. So what do we see there? 
Well, we see that the city spent over two times the budgeted amount. 48 is nearly, is more than double, 21. Uh, we see that RPD claims account for over half of the entire cost and even more than the budgeted amount, right? So 25 million is more than half of 48 million. And in fact, 25 million is more than the budgeted amount, 21 million. And of course, another key finding is that inconsistent transparency on reporting these figures. The impact of all of this is simply the allocation of tax dollars. We are spending well over what we anticipate to spend. Um, and these are tax dollars that could be allocated genuinely anywhere else. So let's take a look at how these civil claims compare between Syracuse and Buffalo, other upstate New York cities. What we find and what we looked at were the average number of claims per year per resident for each city and the average amount paid per resident per year in each city. And what we find is that Rochester actually has the lowest number of claims per year per resident. So in Rochester, we have 30 claims per year per resident, Buffalo has 32, and Syracuse has 40. But even though we have the lowest number of average complaints, we have the highest number of average paid amount. For the average amount paid per resident per year, we are paying $25, whereas Buffalo is paying 18 and Syracuse is paying 11. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean a few things. One, it could mean that our claims here in Rochester are necessarily more severe, which results in a higher payout. It could also mean that we experience procedural differences in how these claims are handled which also could lead to that discrepancy. Recall previously, the decision to litigate or settle is exclusively made with Corporation Council here in Rochester, where Buffalo and Syracuse have a balance of powers. So now let's take a look at the claims in the city of Rochester, specifically between the departments. Here we have a graph detailing the four top departments with the rest of them categorized as other. And what we find most significantly here is that the Rochester Police Department, although only accounting for one third of all of the claims, accounts for one half or over half really of the entire cost. Now let's compare that to the other highest claim uh, department, which is the Department of Environmental Services. It's quite, it's literally inverse, right? The Department of Environmental Services accounts for half of the claims they account for significantly more claims than the Rochester Police Department, but they only account for one third of the total cost. So what we're seeing here is a disproportionate cost to claim ratio. Even though RPD doesn't make up the majority of claims in this data set, they do make up the majority of the cost. So we took a look more specifically at the claims against RPD. We wanted to know things like which of these claims happened the most frequency and which of them were statistically correlated with higher payout amounts. So what we found, the most frequent claim types against the Rochester Police Department were first property damage, then violation of civil rights, then motor vehicle accidents, then bodily injury, then excessive force. Claim types that were statistically correlated with a higher cost were discrimination, wrongful death, section 1983, and bodily injury. There's a key overlap here between one of the most frequent claim types and a high cost claim type, which is bodily injury. We also took a look at what impact does the choice to litigate these claims have on the overall cost. And what we know is that 24% of all of these paid claims are litigated, which is a quarter of them. We found that the choice to litigate claims as opposed to paying them out ultimately was also statistically correlated with a higher payout amount. So the impact here, the variables that are associated with higher costs like bodily injury and like the choice to litigate are occurring with regular to excessive frequency. They are occurring, it seems at a minimum, a quarter of the time. Um, so what does RPD do with this information? Well, let's take a look at their process and their policy. The law department receives all civil claims that are filed against the city. So the law department sends that information to the Rochester Police Department. 
the Rochester Police Department is then meant to update their database inter IA Pro, which is their internal database, uh, with that uh, case. They are then meant to conduct a PSS investigation or a discipline investigation on the officers that are relevant to that civil claim. As they conclude their PSS investigation, they are meant to forward their findings to the law department. This policy is outlined in the professional standards manual, the PSS manual of the RPD. So what we see is actually a discrepancy in the data sets. Given this policy, um, if it was, uh, uh, if it was uh, upheld, this policy, if it was followed, um, every city law data set or city law claim would also be a claim in RPD IA Pro. However, we don't see that alignment. There's a massive discrepancy. And in fact, only 300 of the total 900 cases overlap, which is only about a third. So what's, what does that mean? How does that, how does that, why does that matter? Uh, the impact is that poor record keeping reduces the effectiveness of an EIS or an early intervention system implementation. The Rochester Police Department has talked about using uh, an EIS system, early intervention system provided by Benchmark Analytics. And Benchmark Analytics on their website is very forthcoming about the limitation of their algorithms, which is that the quality and effectiveness of the algorithm depends on the data that is being put in, which means it depends on the policies that govern that data. In this case, we see the vast majority of civil claims that are being filed against officers are not being accounted for in the RPD IA Pro data, uh, database. As a result, there's no way that those claims could be effectively used in the EIS or the early intervention system uh, implementation. So last, we'll talk about our recommendations. We recommend the following things. One, implement a quality assurance plan to ensure that all civil claims data in IA Pro match the data in the city law department's database. Two, collect data on the outcomes of all the civil claims in IA Pro. Three, commence a PSS investigation when a claim is paid out or converted to litigation within 18 months of the alleged incident. Four, publish an annual review of patterns and civil claims against the RPD and or its officers from IA Pro data. And five, incorporate the outcomes of civil claims into its early intervention system. Now it is important to know that um, there are other legislative solutions or proposals that could potentially impact these processes and outcomes as well. However, our focus for this proposal for change is focusing on the policies internal to the Rochester Police Department as opposed to a legislative action. So if you all have any comments, suggestions, question or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us through any of the three means. Uh, email us at pabfeedback at thecityofrochester.gov. You can go to our policy and oversight page using the following link to actually read the report, which goes into much more detail than we're able to go into here. And finally, you can call the number on the screen if you're interested in leaving some feedback or again, if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we appreciate you, the feedback that you give, the energy that you devote to us and um, hope to see you next time.